Hi, Doug. Thanks for joining me today. Hi, Steve. Thanks for having me. It's good to have you. I wanted to have a conversation online uh, on a topic we, we've we've discussed offline, and that is that the inflation poses a real risk to the stock market and, and the stock market in the sense of how most people think of it, the S&P 500, where most of the money is, and most of the money's gone into large growth stocks. So not really talking about the value part of the market, not, not talking about um, you know every sector of the market, um, but the S&P 500's largely become a growth stock index and inflation poses some real um, specific risks to growth stocks, more so than other parts of the market. Um, so I kind of wanted to give you a chance to talk about that and, and, and talk about why inflation, the rates we have now, could really impair the future performance of growth stocks. Yeah, so it's a real concern. Um, as the, the interest rate goes up, first, you know, investors are getting paid more for a less risky asset than they were yesterday. So that lowers the demand for stocks and equities, uh, you know, so something that is less senior than, you know, a treasury bond as far as uh, as our, our perception of level of risk. So if you're getting paid more to hold a treasury bond, you're not, you're going to not be willing to pay as much for, uh, you know, the S&P 500. Um, for growth stocks, this is particularly um damaging because really what a growth stock is is the expectation of a dollar in the future because they're innovating or they they they've just maybe it's a startup venture capital firm with a great idea maybe it's a biotech that um puts a lot of r d in to to capitalize and create value for a drug that they can sell in the future. So they're spending money today in order to try to realize revenue in the future. And with a higher nominal rate and the level of inflation we have today, that dollar in the future is just discounted and worth less today. Um, just the the way that the that the math works, um, and so you can look at it in, in in either way. You you're you're getting paid more to hold a risk a less risky asset today, therefore you are going to be will not be as willing to pay for that future dollar of revenue. Sure. And you're really kind of um, talking about a real shift in the market dynamics. I mean, we, we've, we've had a market that had where we had very low inflation expectations that was really willing to pay up for growth. Um, and we've seen growth do very well. And we've seen other parts of market, including like value stocks or dividend stocks or, or stocks that were more predicated on making money today um, and continuing to make money, but not so much on future growth, um, do very poorly. And, and growth stocks do very well and, and get some, you know, really, really um, very high, historically high valuations. I mean, on, on par with like 1929, 2000. Um, and, and, you know, that low inflation helped drive this. You're talking about a, a real shift where we, where we could actually see a change in leadership and, and we could see um, multiple compression for those growth stocks, aren't you? Yeah. And well, right, because, you know, over the past really two decades, we've seen money supply grow, you know, consistently, you know, six percent a year or so. And when there's more money and you have a company that is going to have the expectation of greater revenue in the future, you know, that that future dollar is, is really, really valuable. Now, in today's environment, however long th th this lasts, uh, the, the money supply is actually shrinking. So the, the potential for future revenue for a growth company is less. And so you you get not only are you getting paid more today to own a, a, a less risky asset, but your expectation of future revenue is lower. So yes, it, it's a double whammy for for a growth stock. Sure, and um, you know that that could mean a very different 
investing environment than, than, than frankly, most investor investment professionals have ever really experienced. Um, you know, that, you know, I, I think where we're seeing that in our portfolios, where on the equity um, budgets, we, we've shifted to more value and, and, and more dividend. Um, and we're certainly avoiding um, the large cap growth, uh, very expensive ones that have come to dominate the S&P 500. Um, but, but, you know, that would, would argue that you might see some mean revision. You, you, you might see value stocks start closing up that performance gap that, that got established by growth stocks. Yeah. And so f for sure. And, and, and indexing has actually been a, a, a derivative product of, of this, um, growth stock phenomena where you can just sort of close your eyes and blindly buy these uh, market cap indexes that are essentially dominated over time by growth stocks, especially in an environment of increased money. Um, and so it, it is a reversion to the mean and it is a very, very long term mean that we are looking at, um, you know, multi decades potentially um, where you're 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 right you're going to have to really really look and dive deep for value and maybe become um scrutinize factors that you're willing to invest in um and and maybe we we go back into a stock pickers market sure so i a real big risk here is to investors who've been doing what works and and what worked was um you buy maybe big tech companies or you buy very speculative growth issues or simply you, you buy an S&P 500 index product, a, a SPY or a Vanguard S&P 500. But a lot of folks have done that. And, you know, I think a lot of them have done that without realizing they were buying uh, primarily very expensive growth products. Um, but what you're describing is that for a lot of investors, a lot of the market, um, there, there's some real, real substantial risk here of what their performance could be over the next several years. Yes. And so, you know, you need to you need to really understand what how big that reversion to the mean might be. You know, we're talking about um, some value stocks out there that are trading less than one time sales, you know, trading uh way less than one time sales we're talking about growth stocks some of them were trading six times sales so what does that reversion to the mean look like it, it will depend on the the path of interest interest rates um how long um the fed operations last um and a lot of things and this this also gets into um some of the psychological biases that we we tend to see you know, people are so used to being able to buy these growth stocks or these index baskets um, that that that's might be the only thing that they know, um, especially a young investor. It might be the only thing they know. So they might it's just familiarity and recency bias is, is, is all that is. And just make sure that, you know, if you're really. The momentum of the last 20 years has been growth stocks. And if that if you're a momentum trader, that momentum might be changing. So don't get stuck with recency bias or familiarity with uh, you know some of these big cap names that 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 we all know so well. Yeah, I I think there's you know we've both been in markets long enough that we know almost anything could happen. There's always the possibility we could return to a more benign inflationary environment. We we could turn return to an environment that's um very positive for growth stocks in the way it has but I, I think that comes with the caveat that that's not what we're seeing right now it's not what we're expecting going forward and historically you always eventually get revision to the mean that that gap always finds a way to close itself at some point um and right now we're seeing everything line up towards that gap starting to close aren't we yeah, I mean, and it, it goes right down to some of the social unrest that we've seen, you know, um, it, it, you know, it's just, it's just really, really gotten out of whack to where that reversion of the mean is going to happen. 
the, the, the citizens of a country will demand the labor of a company of a country will demand that it happens, um, that they get compensated fairly and, and, and that, that the, the growth stocks aren't the only game in town. Sure. So I, I guess just to kind of close on the, the real risk we're talking about here is that a lot of investors, particularly a lot of retail investors, uh, may be sitting on a portfolio that has worked but now carries a lot more risk than they realize with a lot more potential for, for future downside than they probably appreciate. Yeah. And we do, we have a fed chairman who's kind of a social warrior. And I think he's, 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 he's really told everyone, Hey man, um, MMT does not work. The, 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 the growth will not happen forever. It, 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 it's starting to become really expensive and it's starting to cause problems. And, uh, and I think uh, Jerome Powell knows that, um, and I, I think that he's uh, he, he understands the principles of uh, of what's good for a financial system, um, for markets, and and really for the country. So um, short term pain, like he says, um, but long term benefit. Thanks. Well, I think that's a, a, an optimistic note. Yeah to end on. So thank you for that, Doug, and thanks for talking to me today.